more than the behavior of a vast assembly of nerve cells and their associated molecules. In other words, you are just a meat machine. Every thought you have, every feeling you have, every desire you have is the result of a previous natural cause. You may think you're reasoning, you're not really reasoning. It's just molecules in motion. This is called materialism or hard atheism. And if Crick is right, then there is no real ultimate meaning to life because we're just going to become worm food ultimately. I don't think Crick is right. I think everybody in this room and everybody outside this room has a divine purpose for being. And you can find that divine purpose in this ancient collection of documents we put under one binding we now call the Bible. Now when you say this on a college campus, people look at you like you have three heads. Are you crazy? You believe this book is true? First of all, it's got miracles in it. We know miracles don't occur. Why would you believe a book that has such myths and fables in it? And it's written by religious people who were biased and made things up. When it came to Jesus, they wrote it down much later. They, didn't, they weren't eyewitnesses. They, they, they didn't see this for themselves. This is embellished. You can't believe it. I actually think this book is true. And there are four basic questions you need to answer in the affirmative to say this book is true. In other words, if you answer yes to these four questions, I think you can say beyond a reasonable doubt that that book is true. Not beyond all doubt. I could be wrong. I'm not an omniscient being. Maybe I do have it wrong during the Q&A. If you think I, didn't, I said something wrong or you got a different viewpoint, fine, you can bring it up then. But I think beyond a reasonable doubt, you can say the book is true. Answer yes to these four questions. What are the four questions? Here are the four questions. Now that is some pretty grooving music, isn't it? I mean, please, it's not Davy Jones, but it's okay, right? This is actually from our TV show, which is on every Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. if you're an insomniac, on DirecTV channel 378. How many people here have DirecTV? Can I see your hands, please? DirecTV. Six of us. Come on, why not the rest of us? Friends don't let friends watch cable. If you want to get out and have enough faith to be an atheist, you've got to get DirecTV. Actually, that's not true. If you go to that website at 9 p.m., like tonight, we won't be there tonight, but if you go there uh, and click on TV program, you can watch it live on the internet. It's streamed. It's not archived. You've got to be on your computer at that time. As Eric mentioned, we also have radio every Saturday mornings. 144 stations in the Columbus area, 88.1. Is that right? That's what you said? 88.1? If you, if you can and you're interested in listening to it, it is podcasted. So you can go to our websites on iTunes and that whole thing. What we do here is we present evidence for Christianity. We cross-examine ideas against it. And uh, that's what our our ministry is called crossexamined.org. Now, why are these the four questions? Truth, God, miracles, and the New Testament. Does truth exist? If there is no truth, then quite obviously this book can't be true. Of course, if there is no truth, then any book written by an atheist can't be true either. Right? Now, obviously, there's a problem with people who say there is no truth. We're going to answer, yes, there is truth. We'll go through that here tonight. So in a strange way, we're going to rescue both the atheists and the Christians by answering yes to question number one. Question number one has to do with postmodernism or relativism, and we'll point out that that can't be so. Secondly, does God exist? I hope to show you tonight, through three arguments, two scientific and one philosophical, that there is a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, moral, personal, intelligent creator out there. These arguments are taught in the Bible, but we're not going to even open the Bible. We're not going to use the Bible to show you that, these, uh, that this theistic God exists. We're not even really going to talk much about the Bible here tonight. We're going to give you those three arguments and conclude that it does appear that a theistic God exists. The third question is, are miracles possible? Obviously, if miracles are not possible, throw the Bible away and every other book that talks about miracles. I hope to show you tonight that not only are miracles possible, but the greatest miracle in the Bible has already occurred and we have scientific evidence for it. Then we can get to the key question, and that is question number four, is the New Testament true? The New Testament doesn't have a prayer. If truth doesn't exist, God doesn't exist, or miracles are not possible. But if truth exists, God exists, and miracles are possible, then we can see if we have an accurate, historically reliable account of miracles occurring in the first century to a man named Jesus and his apostles, that authenticate Jesus and the apostles as coming from God in the 27 handwritten Greek manuscripts we now call the New Testament. Did those people really 
see this for themselves? Were they eyewitnesses? Did they really write down the truth? Or were they written down much later by religious people who embellished it and were biased and you can't really trust it? Now, we're not going to be able to cover all these questions tonight. As Eric mentioned, actually what we're going to do is cover points one and two tonight, and then we'll move on tomorrow to points three and four. Uh, so even two sessions can't cover this material uh, to the extent it could should be covered. The book is 450 pages. There's no way I can cover it in the amount of... Well, actually, I probably could cover it, because I'm originally from New Jersey. Okay? You see, I speak... That's right. You want a piece of me? Um, by the way, you cannot spell elite without Eli. One New York Giant fan in here? That's it? Please! Anyway, um, the book... I, I mean, I speak at 150 words a minute with Gus to 350, so I'm going to move quickly. If you can't keep up or you want more information, the book, as Eric said, will be available on the book table, as well as a 10-part DVD series from our TV show that is 10 hours long. It goes through all this material in a lot more detail. And I want to point out, by the way, that all the proceeds from the sale of the books and the DVDs will go to feed needy children. Mine. <laughs> Just so you know, I've got three sons. Two of them are in college, so I need some help. In fact, the oldest one's already graduated. All three of my sons went to the University of South Carolina. They're all Gamecocks. And uh, the oldest one went Air Force ROTC. I went Navy. I was in the Navy. I was a naval aviator back in the 80s and early 90s. And Navy stands for never again volunteer yourself. I don't know if you know that, but it does. So I told my sons, they were both interested in aviation, I said, uh, if you want to fight, go Navy. But if you want a good life, go Air Force. So they're going Air Force. The oldest son went Air Force ROTC. He graduated. Now he's out in Las Vegas as an intelligence officer for the guys that fly the drones. Do you know all the drones that are currently flown in the war zones right now are actually flown from Las Vegas? They, they take off in Afghanistan, but then they're controlled from Las Vegas. And you thought there was no real-world application for Xbox. <laughs> there it is. My second son is going to be a pilot when he graduates in May. He's already got a pilot slot, so he's excited about that. My third son is not in Air Force ROTC, but he went off to the University of South Carolina as an engineer a year and a half ago. So for about the past 18 months, my wife and I have been empty nesters. Yeah, it took us a while to get used to that. About 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's how long it took to change the locks. <laughs> Do we have any empty nesters in here? Empty, any, any? Just a couple? Yeah, you notice how, how clean the house stays when they're gone? When my kids come home, it's a tornado, but when they're gone, man, it's clean. We love our kids, but it is a clean house when they're gone. There's our website if you want more information, crossexamine.org. Oh, and one more thing. If I time this just right, we'll have absolutely no time for your questions. Now, we'll have time for your questions. We're going to cover points one and two and then get to questions, all right? So we've got to start here at truth.